So you know some chords and the most common strumming pattern ever. And you're just kind of strumming away and you're getting kind of bored of, you know, doing the same old thing. Well, today I'm going to show you a little trick that will turn that into this. James here from GoodGuitarist.com and today I want to show you a cool picking trick that's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And you can use this with any strumming pattern that you already know, any chords that you already know, and it's going to make it a lot more interesting and add a ton of depth to your playing. If you watched my top five love songs video that I released on Valentine's Day, you may remember that we briefly touched upon this and a few people have asked for me to elaborate on it. Uh, if you have any suggestions for lessons, please let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, take a moment to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, you know, do all that stuff that helps support me and this channel. Anyways, on to our lesson. We're going to start with our chord progression and our strumming pattern. Uh, I want to do this with a really simple one. It's just going to be A, B, A, D, like uh, something you'd see in uh, Three Little Birds or, or, you know, something like that. And uh, we're going to use the most common strumming pattern ever. Down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. If you need help with either that chord progression or that strumming pattern, please refer to my free ebook. It's free for all my subscribers. There's a link down below and in the corner. Uh, you'll get your copy emailed to you. It has all the stuff you need, all the fundamentals. It'll, it has videos and everything. It's gonna teach you all that. Anyways, our chord progression goes like this, just A chord with the most common strumming pattern ever, then E, then A, and then D. And instead of making big strumming motions, we're just gonna do a little motion that goes like from here to here, just, you know, between the strings, right? And the key here, we're gonna use our wrist, but we're also gonna rotate our forearm. If you just use your wrist, it gets all tight. You know, and we don't want that. We need to be loose in order for this to work. So try to be loose and do a really little strumming here. Sorry, that's bad grammar. You know what I mean. And at this point, it still sounds like strumming. It's just a, you know, a little bit quieter. The next thing I want you to do though, for that down up on beat two, just take a look at the strumming pattern here. Down, down up. For that down up, I want you to do a really small motion and just aim for a single string. It can be any string on the chord. Um, it could go like this. So I'm still strumming beat one with a, you know, a, a little strum because we're just keeping our motions small. Then for beat two and for that down up, I'm just kind of aiming randomly, you know? It could be like that or that. It doesn't really matter what you hit. You could even hit two strings at a time. You know, the point is to change the size of your stroke so that it gets less strings than all of them. You know, that's, that's it. That's all we're doing today, right? So we make a full stroke to start with because beat one needs to like, you know, have something behind it. But then for the rest of the strokes, we're just keeping them really small. Uh, if you can aim for a single string, great. Get a couple strings, that's great too. And in order for this to work, you definitely need to be comfortable with strumming, you know, so that that rhythm is already there. And like I said, if you need help with that, I have that ebook. I also have a course, Learn Guitar Once and For All, which is designed to help you build your rhythm from the ground up, as well as all the other fundamentals of guitar. I'll put a link in the corner for that too. Anyways, once you work on that a bit, you just keep doing that, but substituting the other strokes. You know, the only one that should always be a strum is the first one because beat one needs to feel a lot bigger. Otherwise, you know, um, we did it for beat two, right? We did the down up on beat two. Well, we could do the miss up on beat three, you know, that upstroke. So we could go like down, down, up, miss up, you know, and just practice that a bunch. Down, down, up, miss up. So that upstroke at the end, that's the only one that we care about doing as a single stroke, right? And I would practice it for a few days like that. Like on day one, you just do the down up on beat two. You know, and then on day two, you do that miss up on beat three. And then on day, uh, what, we're at day three, it ends with 
down up, right? So we do the down up on beat four. There's no hard and fast rules here. You just got to expose yourself to it and you eventually, after doing it slowly at your own pace, will find yourself able to speed it up. Ultimately, as long as you follow the main principle of making a smaller strumming motion and aiming for individual strings, sometimes you hit a couple strings, whatever, it doesn't matter. That'll add a lot of texture to your playing. And once you get used to it and you speed it up and you play through an entire chord progression, If you want a specific song, you can try Good Riddance, Time of Your Life by Green Day. I have a lesson where I tell you exactly and specifically which strings to hit, you know, so you can do that or you can apply this concept and just kind of feel it out. Honestly, I doubt Billy Joel Armstrong, like in the recording studio was like mapping it all out. He's probably just feeling it out like this, you know, and, and came up with something that sounds good. So you're welcome to try that yourself. Another one is What I Got by Sublime awesome to try this on. Uh, I'll put links to those lessons down below so you can learn the like the core of the song and then you can apply this technique to it. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions or uh, comments down below. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this lesson and don't forget to grab your copy of my free ebook or even check out my courses if you'd like to help support me in creating lessons like this for people like you who want to learn and have fun playing guitar. Um, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.